Hello everyone. So over the next day or so, I'm going to be building a three-point carryall for my tractor. Now as you can see, I have a decent little tractor here. He's very nice, but I have one little problem. My little problem is that when I have my auger on the back, I can't do anything. So if I take the auger off, what I want to be able to do is build something back here that will allow me to lift up a whole bunch of stuff and put it in the back of the pickup truck. You see we have hogs and lots of different animals and one of the things that I do as you can tell is buy bulk pellets. Actually that's just a bag but uh, the bags rip open. So what I like to do is fill a 55 gallon drum up full of corn and buy things in bulk. The problem is is that sucker weighs about 500 pounds and it's really difficult to get it out of the back of the pickup truck. So usually I use the bucket and a chain and I drive the bucket up to, to up to the edge of the bed. When I drive the chain or drive it up, hook it up, wrap the chain around it, pick it up, drive it into the barn and then kind of push, lift, heave and all that good stuff to get it into the barn and it's a pain. So what I want to do is build a platform that I can just raise to the very back of the tailgate right here and roll this sucker right onto the platform drive away, go back up into the barn, and push it off of the barn into the tack room, which has an elevated floor. So, I searched YouTube everywhere, could not seem to find decent videos on how to make a three-point carryall. Found lots of videos on three-point carryalls, and a couple of good ones, but they were 30, 45 minutes long. I don't really like that. It's a little, not patient enough to watch all of those. So, what we're gonna do is, we are going to make a three-point carryall and I'm going to give you the quick version of how to do that. Overall it will take maybe two to three hours to make a make a carryall but pretty simple, pretty quick, pretty easy. So the first thing that we've done is I've gone ahead and cut out all my materials. The other thing that's a little tricky is finding the dimensions of a carryall. So basically what you need is four sticks of, of angle iron that are three feet long and then two sticks of angle iron that are 28 and a half inches long. Simple as that. So let's take a look at my three-point carryall. All right, so let me show you what I've done. First thing is, is we've cut, like I said, we've cut out everything to length. I bought one stick of 20 foot angle iron. This is three inch angle iron by three inch angle iron by, I don't remember, three eighths thick, something like that. Maybe it's quarter inch, I think it's quarter inch anyway. Um, pretty good stuff, it's pretty stout stuff. And I went ahead and cut it to length. 36, four sticks at 36 inches, two sticks at 28 and a half. And that left me a little bit left over for another project. The other thing that I like to do when I weld, if you can see this, is I like clean, bright metal. I don't like to weld through all the spatter, or all the crud and everything that's on the, me on the uh, metal. Just seems like uh, I do a little bit better job. And it's probably me and certainly not the welder. So I ground, cut everything, ground it down to clean bright metal, like you would see here. And uh, really, this thing is ready to level up and tack together. So today, what we'll be using as we come into the garage is we'll be using my Hobart handler. Uh, it's a 210 MVP for the multi-voltage plugs. I really don't ever use the uh, 110 pretty much just use 230 all the time or 220 all the time and then I have it hooked up here you know obviously to a bottle that's a 75 25 mix so let me get my gear on and we will get going All right, so as you can see, we've got a little gap on the top corner here, and uh, that'll get fixed here in just a minute when I release the uh, vice grips, because that's what's kind of twisting everything in. But we've got our top bar all ready to go. Bottom welds are done and ground. And then I decided to add this little piece down at the bottom to square things up and to keep everything uh, nice and tight. So now we'll go ahead and finish welding everything up, and that'll be it.
All right, now so now that we have welded everything up and all the seams and all the corners and everything that touches together, last thing to do is put on our top link pin. And so what we did here is we cut out some uh, strips of metal here. I forget what they are. They're more than quarter inch, but anyway, maybe they're quarter inch. Um, something along the lines. And drilled a 7 8 inch hole for my top pin, which you can see floating in here. All right, so... As luck would have it, the battery and the camera died, and so we didn't get to see the last couple of things get put together. But let me walk you through the finished product so that you can see everything that we've done. All right, so the, fi so the finished product looks like this. Now Copper and Molly are happy and excited about it too, as we can tell. Copper, Molly, go on. Okay, so what we have is the finished bottom piece, and we have everything hooked up here on the top. So let me show you a little bit about the top link. So let me get under here real quick. So when you look at the top link, what I did was I cut, I divided the top bar here in half and then added the width of, took the width of the uh, top pin here and just welded the two there. They're like two inches apart. It's not a, not a big deal, not a hard thing to do. It's like 28 inches and then you subtract, or 29 inches, subtract two inches, it gives you 27 and then half 27 gives you the center point and from there you add an inch to each side and there's your top link so here's kind of you know what the top link looks like now I want to show you a couple of things number one I don't like to get cut and most people don't like to get cut so what I do is I round every corner and bevel all of the edges so that when I'm messing around with the top link and then I will grind this down as well but I have a perfectly smooth product now you also see right here that these protrude just a hair. Something along those lines. I need to grind those down as well before we finish painting. That way I've got a smooth top. And then the same down here. As I look to hooking pins up, I have rounded the sides right here and uh, made sure that there's not anything for me to grab my hand on or, or get caught while I'm putting these in. The pins are your typical category one. They're seven eighths of an inch thick. You just use a simple 7 8 hole saw to uh, drill that hole. And the same with the top link here. I used a 7 8 which is slightly larger than what the, the actual pin is, but I think the pin's 3 quarters, but anyway, it's good enough for me. So there's that. So grind down a few things, and then as we finish doing grind, all the grinding, we will get it ready for paint. Paint it bright orange to match Mr. Agco Tractor here. And... That will be it. Hope you guys enjoy the video. 